So while plotting the root locus of a particular control system, we might come into situations where we are faced with complex zeros and poles. So while we are faced with complex zeros and poles, it might be a bit tricky to plot the root locus. So that is when we calculate the departure angle or the angle of departure. So what do you actually mean by the term angle of departure? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term angle of departure of a particular control system? Well, but find out. So, angle of departure. Just like what the name suggests, it is simply an angle with which something departs a particular point. That is, with which something moves away from a particular point. So, we know for a fact that in the case of a particular control system, the root locus emerges from the poles and then goes towards the zeros like this. So therefore, it emerges from the poles and reaches the zeros. So therefore, if this particular pole was on the real axis like this, it can directly emerge like this and go to the breakaway point and then break away from this particular position. But what do we do when this particular pole is an imaginary pole and is somewhere around here? So if it is somewhere around here, this, 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 this can break away like this, this can go 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 like this, 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 this. So it can go in any angle and it can go to the break away point. So therefore, we have to have a specific angle with which the line departs this particular point. And that particular angle is simply what you refer to as angle of departure. As simple as that, guys. So let us see a very simple example to understand what you refer to as angle of departure. So let us consider this particular question. G of S is equal to K into S plus 9 divided by S into S square plus 4S plus 11. So here, taking the zeros when we equate the numerator is equal to zero, we get the zeros as s plus nine is equal to zero, which implies that s is equal to minus nine. So therefore, we have a zero at s is equal to minus nine. And now, let us find the poles. So finding the poles now, we have to equate the denominator is equal to zero. That is s into s square plus four s plus 11 is equal to zero, which implies that s is equal to zero by taking this s is equal to zero, or s square plus four s plus 11 is equal to zero. So now upon solving this particular equation, we would get the values of s as s is equal to minus two plus or minus 2.64 j. So therefore the values of poles are s is equal to zero and s is equal to minus two plus 2.64 j and minus two minus 2.64 j. So now let us plot this over here. The first pole is at when s is equal to zero. And now the second pole is when s is equal to minus two plus 2.64 j. So therefore minus two plus 2.64j would be somewhere around here like this. And now the next pole is minus 2 minus 2.64j. So minus 2 minus 2.64j, which would be somewhere around here. So now here we have three poles and one particular zero. So the beauty of a root locus is the fact that this is symmetrical along this particular real axis. So that is whatever it is there here, it is the mirror image downwards. So here now let us find the angle of departure. So in order to find the angle of departure here, let us consider this particular pole P1. So this, if this is P1, P2 and P3, and if this is Z1, let us consider this particular pole P1. So now what we have to do is that we have to now join this particular pole with the directly downward pole over here. Then we have to join this particular pole with the next pole over here. 
and then we have to join this particular pole with the zero that we have over here. That is, in simple terms, all we have to do is select a particular pole and join it with lines to all the poles and zeros in that particular root locus diagram. So once we do that, next what we have to do is that we have to now find the angles that each of these zeros and poles make with this particular selected pole. So therefore, when we consider these two poles, they are at an angle of 90 degrees with each other. So now, next we have to find this particular angle like this. This particular theta. Let us take it as a theta 3. So here, the interesting fact is that this is a straight line. So here, if this is an angle, say, x, then theta 3 is equal to 180 minus x. So we can find the value of x very easily because we know for a fact that tan x is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. Here, opposite side is 2.64. So this becomes 2.64 divided by adjacent side is 2. So which implies that x is equal to tan inverse 2.64 divided by 2, which is equal to, we can find this using the scientific calculator, tan inverse 2.64 divided by 2 is equal to 52.853313. So this becomes somewhat equal to 52.83 degrees. So therefore this is simply 180 minus 52.853 which is equal to 127.14 degrees. So this theta 3 is equal to 127.14 degrees. That, so now we have found out theta 3. Similarly let us find this particular angle say theta 1. So here, when we take tan theta 1, what we get is that tan theta 1 is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. So opposite side is 2.64 divided by adjacent side is say minus 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this becomes 7. So therefore theta 1 is equal to tan inverse 2.64 divided by 7, which is equal to, on taking it on the scientific calculator, we would get 20.66 degrees. So now, now comes the interesting part. Now we have found out this particular angle, this particular angle, and this particular angle, which is 90 degrees. So now, in order to find the angle of departure, we have to simply use a very simple formula given by angle of departure is equal to 180 minus sum of all the other remaining pole angles plus sum of all the angles made by the zeros. So by substituting it in this particular equation, we would simply get the angle of departure, which is given as 180 minus sum of all the angles of the remaining poles. That is here, the remaining pole is P3 and P2. So the sum of all the angles made by the remaining poles, which is this particular angle plus this particular angle plus sum of all the angles made by all the other zeros. So here there's just one zero, so therefore this particular angle 20.66. So therefore the angle of departure now becomes angle of departure is equal to 180 minus here sum of all the angles made by remaining poles which is 127.14 plus 90 plus sum of all the angles made by all the other zeros which is 20.66. So we would now get this is equal to minus 16.48 degrees. So here this is equal to minus 16.48 degrees. So therefore the angle of departure is minus 16.48 degrees. So therefore here when what we observe is that if we are taking this particular axis, if this is plus 16.48, then this is minus 16.48. So therefore it would depart like this somewhere around here at an angle of 16.48 degrees and then it would go into the break-in point or the breakaway point and then it converges to the zeros. So this does is simply how you find the angle of departure of the root locus of a particular control system when we have imaginary poles.
As simple as that, guys. There's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as angle of departure of the root locus of a particular control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.